Hello everybody and welcome to a lesson for section 5b of contemporary math should you believe a statistical study uh, and this is a very very good question because as you will see there are many ways that statistical studies can be bent to skew the truth uh, so we'll take a look at a bunch of guidelines here, like getting the big picture view of the study, considering the source, looking for bias, checking the results are presented fairly, like all these different ways. Uh, let's get into it. So most statistical research is carried out with integrity and care. Nevertheless, statistical research is sufficiently complex that bias can arise in many different ways. Like, even if it's not meant to be there. Uh, so there slash here are eight guidelines that can help you answer a question. Should I believe a statistical study? The first guideline here is get a big picture view of the study. So you can try to answer these following questions in order to get a better understanding as to what the study is saying. What is the goal of the study? What is the population under study? Was the population clearly and appropriately defined? Uh, what type of study was used? Was the type appropriate for the goal? I'm assuming this is observational study or experiment. Okay, so for this guideline, we wanna get some ideas to what these, uh, get some answers to these questions for this scenario. Imagine the following hypothetical news report. Researchers gave 100 participants their astrological horoscopes and asked whether the horoscopes appeared to be accurate. 85% of the participants answered yes, that the horoscopes were accurate. The researchers then concluded that horoscopes are valid most of the time. Uh, this should raise lots of questions. First, what type of study was used? It was an observational study. And that being said, they just told them their horoscopes and collected data on it, and that was it. But a problem with this is that horoscopes are subjective. It, people can say whatever they want to in a horoscope. Uh, so, what was the goal of this study? I'm guessing it was to prove that horoscopes are valid. Uh, what was the population under study? This question here, was the population clearly and appropriately defined? No, it just says 100 participants. We don't know who that was. Um, what type of study was used? What was the, uh, was the type appropriate for the goal? And in this case, in these last couple sentences, we know it was an observational study. Was it appropriate for the goal? Well, probably not. Uh, a controlled experiment would have been better, where some people got a real one and some people got a fake one, so they could test the results on the real horoscope versus the fake one. Um, the way the participants are questioned afterward could influence the results. Uh, this experiment to get even stronger results should have been double blind. So the, uh, the people reading the horoscopes and the people receiving the horoscopes don't know whether or not they are being given a real or fake horoscope. So just uh, get a big picture, that will always help. Uh, the second guideline here, consider the source. Statistical studies are supposed to be subjective but the people who carry them out and fund them may be biased. If Ford, the company, auto company Ford, decides to run a quality analysis on small SUVs, well, of course, they are going to be biased to give their small SUVs the best scores. So knowing who or what company is providing the information and coming up with this information will be very, very uh, pertinent to whether or not you should believe the statistical study. 
The guideline number three, look for bias in the sample. So we have two types of bias here that tend to happen when taking samples. Selection bias occurs whenever researchers select their sample in a way that tends to make it unrepresentative of the population. <clears throat> you want to get a feeling for how American adults view the NFL, whether they like it or dislike it. Selection bias, like one form of selection bias, would be to go to all the NFL stadiums on a Sunday where there are games and ask people if they like football. Of course, the results are going to be overwhelmingly yes, because they're there at, at a football game to enjoy football. And it's just those people don't accurately represent the entirety of America. The second one here, participation bias, occurs primarily with surveys and polls. Uh, it arises when people choose whether to participate. Because people who feel strongly about an issue are more likely to participate, their opinions may not represent the larger, repre uh, the larger population. So uh, an example of that, based solely on information given, uh, do you have reason to question the results of the following hypothetical study? Uh, the first one being a state Republican Party polls 1,600 of its members to determine whether its candidate for the U.S. Senate is likely to win against the Democratic candidate. Of course this is biased. The Republican Party polled its own members. Of course they're, they think their candidate is going to win. It would happen if these were switched around. If a Democratic Party polled its own members, of course they think the Democratic, member, uh, the Democratic candidate is going to win. So, yeah, this is hugely biased. Uh, you don't want to trust these results at all. Um, but what you could do to get a better result, a more true result, is to send a ballot to everyone in the state, no matter if they're Republican, Democrat, Independent, whatever party they identify with. Just give everyone a chance to respond, and you will have a more, much more accurate result. Guideline number four, look for problems in defining or measuring the variables of interest. So a little math speak here, a variable is any item or quantity that can take on different values. For example, the show being watched in the number of viewers. Um, however, the variables of interest in a statistical study are the items or quantities that the study seeks to measure. So, I mean, we could talk about our favorite TV shows. That's going to vary from person to person. But if people want to know what the average weight of all of us is, talking about our TV shows and recording that information isn't going to help. So we have to make sure that the variable of interest is what we are studying, what we are measuring. And to that end, we have to beware, guideline number five, beware of confounding variables. So variables that are not intended to be a part of a study can sometimes make it difficult to interpret the results properly. Such variables are called confounding variables. Uh, because they confound, a.k.a. confuse, the study's results. Uh, guideline number six. Consider the setting and wording in surveys. We, I mentioned it earlier. I think it was guideline number two. Or it would have been guideline number one with the horoscopes. Uh, the way the participants are questioned could influence the results. So you have to make sure that questions are worded in a way uh, that won't prompt people to respond in a certain way. So let's read this. Even when a survey is constructed with proper sampling and clearly defined terms and questions, it is important to watch out for problems in the setting or wording that might produce an inaccurate or dishonest response. For example, the question, do you cheat on your taxes? 
most people are going to say no because uh, people don't want to be accused of cheating on anything. Another way that surveys are sort of skewed is that people are more likely to choose the first item in a survey. So your list of items that people are picking from in a survey should be in different orders just to make sure uh, you're not just getting the top item being picked all the time. Maybe you work for Sony and you're polling people about laptop computers and you put yours first knowing this. This would be, this would give you bad results. All right, let's take a look at the last two guidelines here. Guideline seven and guideline eight. Guideline seven says check that results are presented fairly. The study may be misrepresented in graphs or concluding statements. Researchers may misinterpret the results or jump to conclusions not supported by the results. For example, based solely on the information given, decide whether you believe the stated claim. A new diet program claims that 200 randomly selected participants lost an average of 24.3 pounds in six weeks, and the program works for anyone with enough discipline. Okay, so personally, me reading that, I don't think this is a good claim, like, at all. Not even a little bit. And there are multiple reasons, the first of which being 24.3 pounds. And that, that, is a, that is a lot of weight for one person to lose. So think of it like this. If you had 50 people lose 100 pounds each, the rest of the 150 people would not have to lose that much weight in order for this average to come out to be 24.3 pounds. Also, what, what about these people? You know, I'm, I weigh 180 pounds. Can I lose 24.3 pounds? Probably, if I really want to do it. But I know for sure if I were 500 pounds, it would be easier for me to lose 24.3 pounds if I put some work into it. So all these different things go into this. I would not believe this uh, claim at all. For example, a stand back and consider the conclusions. Ask yourself the following questions. Did the study achieve its goals? Do the conclusions make sense? Can you rule out alternative explanations for the results? Like confounding variables, and if the conclusions do make sense, do they have any practical significance? So we have one more example down here. We're going to just take a look to see if we would believe this claim. The university athletic department sends out a press release claiming that the basketball team has a 64% chance of making it to the NCAA tournament. So many questions. How did you get the number 64%? Did you only ask people that go to this particular university? Did you ask people who are not fans of this basketball team? Or, yeah. Uh, there are so many questions. None of them, I think, can be answered by this statement. So I would not believe this at, at all. So I'm hoping this, this lesson, this video, as, shows you that you should start questioning some results that you see everywhere. Uh, and this gives you some guidelines to do that. And that will conclude the lesson for Section 5B. Good luck.